So we're not going to know all of the details of the mind of God, but can we look around us and determine a meaning, a purpose, in a more general sense? And, and here's what I was looking at. You look at the pattern. And what was the pattern? You start with just spirit, just spiritual energy. And in the explosion of the Big Bang, you have that just one unified energy, which diversified into, there's five types of energy now. And it diversified into matter, into first hydrogen, a little helium, and then all of the other types of matter, of what we would call inert matter. Now, we know there's divine spirit in it all, but from the physical standpoint, inert matter. That created and diversified and became millions of different types of inert matter until we had life develop. And then when we had life develop, we had consciousness develop. And with consciousness came something very unique. This diversified matter suddenly has a conscious connection with the divine. And so we go from divine spirit to this incredible diversifying into inert matter and then back to that very matter being created to consciousness and reconnecting on a conscious level with the divine. And that's the spirit of unity. That is the power of unity. To me, that is the purpose of the universe. Why? I can't tell you that. But I can tell you that the pattern, the way of the universe, is to go from this diversity back to the unification of matter with the divine in this consciousness that can not only be aware of the divine, but can experience in a very specific way. And if we have this power of unity that can do this, what does that mean to us? Well, Angie has given us some examples. He's given us examples of people who have cured others of illness by reaching out to others with this divine power. And he's given us an example of people who have virtually levitated huge masses by consciously, through their mind, connecting with this divine power. And that brings us back to Mono Lake. You didn't think we were going to get there, did you? <laughs> Because I saw another form of the power of unity, the divine power of unity. Because there were some students who went there, some advanced uh, graduate students to do an ecological study, uh, primarily on the water. And what they found was that, this is the eastern side of the Sierras, but what they found was that Los Angeles is a huge city in a desert. And what does a huge city need that a desert doesn't have? Water. And in the early 1900s, they found lots of water in the Owens Valley along the eastern side of the Sierras, and so they built a huge canal and started taking all of that water. And what this study found was that two uh, lakes had already been totally drained, causing ecological disasters of horrible windstorms and sandstorms and things, and that Mono Lake was on its way to the same end. Because what they had done is they had dammed the lake, the streams that go into Mono Lake. Mono Lake is a very interesting ecology because creeks go in, but no water goes out, except by evaporation. And so it is two and a half times saltier than the ocean is, creating this very unique system in which most forms of life can't live, but a few can, such as the flies I described and certain types of, of briny shrimp, they're called. And those things support massive amounts of, of animals, particularly migratory birds that go through there. And if that's lost, those bird populations are going to be devastated. And so there was a young man, David Gaines, and, and later married uh, one of the other students, Sally. 
And he said, I can't let this happen. And he started working. <clears throat> and he put together a miracle. He formed the mono.